So in this video, we are going to discuss about scapula. The scapula is a flat triangular bone situated on the posterior lateral part of the chest wall, extending from two to eight ribs. It has a dorsal surface and a costal surface. It also has three borders: a lateral border, a medial border, and a superior border. It also has three angles: a lateral angle, an inferior angle, and a superior angle. It also has three processes: a spine, an acromion process, and a coracoid process. The lateral angle also has a pear-shaped glenoid fossa, which corresponds to the head of the scapula. The constricted part medial to this glenoid cavity is the anatomical neck of scapula. So let's discuss about the costal surface first. The costal surface has a shallow concavity directed forwards and laterally. Entirety of the medial border of the costal surface receives the insertion of serratus anterior muscle. This muscle is the serratus anterior muscle arising from the first eight ribs and inserted onto the medial border on the costal surface of scapula. The rest of the costal surface gives origin to the subscapularis muscle. This muscle is the subscapularis muscle arising from the subscapular fossa on the costal surface and inserted onto the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. Let's discuss about the dorsal surface. The spine of the scapula divides the dorsal surface into an upper supraspinous fossa and a lower infraspinous fossa. Both these fossae are separated by the spinoclinoid notch which conveys the suprascapular vessels through it. The supraspinous fossa in the medial part gives origin to the supraspinatus muscle. This muscle is the supraspinatus muscle originating from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula and inserted onto the greater tuberosity of humerus. The infraspinous fossa on the lateral part in the upper two-thirds gives origin to teres minor muscle. This muscle is the teres minor muscle originating from the lateral border of the scapula and inserted onto the greater tuberosity of humerus. Coming to the lower one-third of the lateral part, it gives origin to the teres major muscle. This muscle is the teres major muscle originating from the lower one-third of the lateral border and inserted onto the medial lip of the bicepital groove. The rest of the infraspinous fossa gives origin to the infraspinatus muscle. This muscle is the infraspinatus muscle originating from the infraspinous fossa and inserted onto the humerus. Next, let's discuss about the lateral border. The lateral border is also called as the axillary border. In the upper part, just below the glenoid cavity, it has an infraglenoid tubercle which gives origin to the long head of triceps muscle. Let's discuss about the medial border next. The medial border on the coastal surface receives the insertion of serratus anterior as discussed before. But on the dorsal surface, just above the spine, the medial border receives the insertion of the levator scapular muscle. And in front of the apex of the spine, it receives the insertion of rhomboidus minor muscle. Below the apex of the spine, the medial border receives the insertion of rhomboidus major muscle. This muscle is the levator scapular muscle arising from the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and inserted onto the medial border of the scapula. And this muscle is the rhomboidus minor muscle, originating from the spines of C7 and T1 vertebra and inserted onto the medial border of scapula. This muscle is the rhomboidus major muscle, arising from the spines of T2 to T5 vertebra and inserted onto the medial border of the scapula. Next, let's discuss about the superior border. The superior border is thin and short. It has a notch called as suprascapular notch. Just medial to this notch, is the point of origin of homohyoid muscle. This muscle is the homohyoid muscle. Just lateral to the suprascapular foramen is the root of the coracoid process. The transverse scapular ligament converts the suprascapular notch into a suprascapular foramen. The suprascapular now passes through this foramen, whereas the suprascapular vessels pass above the transverse scapular ligament. Coming to the lateral angle. The lateral angle has the glenoid cavity which articulates with the humerus to form the glenohumeral joint or also called the shoulder joint. Just above the glenoid cavity is the supraglenoid tubercle. The supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of biceps muscle. This muscle is the biceps brachii muscle originating from the supraglenoid tubercle and inserted onto the radial tuberosity of radius. Next, let's discuss about the inferior angle. The inferior angle overlies the seventh rib. On the coastal surface, it receives the insertion of serratus anterior, whereas on the dorsal surface, it gives one slip of origin to latissimus dorsi muscle. 
this huge muscle is the latissimus dorsi muscle originating from the iliac crest thoracolumbar fascia and the scapula and inserted onto the floor of the bicipital groove the superior angle is overlapped by the trapezius muscle next let's discuss about the spine the spine is a triangular bony shelf like projection it has an apex a base an upper surface a lower surface and a crest the apex lies at the level of the spine of t3 vertebra the base is free and thick it forms the posterior border of the spinal glenoid notch the upper and lower surfaces contribute to the formation of the supra as well as the infraspinous fossa the crest of the spine of the scapula has an upper lip and a lower lip the upper lip receives the insertion of the medial fibers of trapezius muscle this is the trapezius muscle originating from the vertebral spines to the clavicle as well as the scapula the upper lip continues as the medial border of the acromion process the lower lip gives origin to the posterior fibers of the deltoid muscle this muscle is the deltoid muscle originating from the clavicle and scapula and inserted onto the humerus the lower lip continues as the lateral border of the acromion process next let's discuss about the acromion process the lateral end of the spine projects forwards and forms the acromion process it has a lateral border a medial border a superior surface and inferior surface and a tip the lateral border gives origin to the medial fibers of deltoid muscle the medial border has an oval articular facet which articulates with the clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint the superior surface is subcutaneous superior surface separated from the supraspinatus by a subacromial bursa next let's discuss about the coracoid process the coracoid process is a beak like process it has a lower vertical part and has an upper horizontal part the horizontal part of the coracoid process has a superior surface an inferior surface an andromedial border the posterolateral border and a tip the andromedial border receives the insertion of the pectoralis minor muscle this muscle is the pectoralis minor muscle originating from the 3 4 5 ribs and inserted onto the coracoid process the andromedial border gives attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament this ligament is the coracoclavicular ligament the posterolateral border gives attachment to the coracoacromial as well as the coracohumeral ligament this ligament is the coracoacromial ligament between the coracoid process and the acromion process and this ligament is the coracohumeral ligament between the coracoid process and the humerus the tip of the coracoid process gives origin to the short head of biceps laterally as well as the coracobrachialis medially this muscle is the coracobrachialis originating from the coracoid process and inserted onto the humerus to put the scapula in anatomical position the glenoid cavity should be upwards and laterally the coracoid process should be facing directly forwards and the spine should be posterior coming to ossification the scapula ossifies through eight centers of which one is a primary center and seven are secondary centers the first primary center occurs at the age of 8 weeks of intrauterine life the first center for the coracoid process occurs at the age of 1 year which fuses us with the primary center at the age of 15 years of the seven secondary center two are for the coracoid process two are for the acromion process one for the medial border one for the inferior angle and one for the glenoid cavity all these centers appear at the age of puberty and fuse with the primary center at the age of 20 years thank you for watching this video please consider liking sharing and subscribing thank you